welcome. Welcome to another episode of Taboo Talk featuring your very own pastor, me, Lady Charmaine Day. Today's show is guaranteed to be full of sensitive, intimate, natural conversations rarely talked about in the Christian community. So now get ready for your own spiritual consultation. Are you ready? Great, let's begin. How are you doing, beautiful? I know you are marvelous, special, phenomenal, and beautiful because these are all adjectives I would use to describe you. You simply are wonderful and incredible. You are so kind and uplifting. You take the time to help other people and you are so uplifting. So I just want to give you a warm round of applause for being so wonderful. Yay! Continue doing what you're doing because you make God look great. God works through people and he's working through you to be a blessing to others. I have a few announcements for beginning the show. If you haven't already, please download onto your Android and iPhone the Lady Charmaine Day app. This app is my free gift to you for joining the ministry and being a part of Taboo Talk virtual show. On Lady Charmaine Day app, you can look at the show, you can listen to old radio shows, you can listen and read the blog, you can call in with a prayer request, there's a QR scanner and a tip calculator for your convenience. And the key word is, it's free. So get yours while you can. Also, when you have a chance, please visit LadyCharmaineDay.com. There you can visit my blog, learn more about this ministry, see Taboo Talk virtual show, and see up-to-date pictures and videos. And while there, please visit the store to make a purchase. It's through your purchases that I'm able to continue to do this ministry. And this ministry is done online through this show, through my social media, through my app, and through my website. So if you're following me through one of those mediums, I consider you to be a part of this ministry and you're wanted and prayed for all the time. And my last announcement before beginning the show is to thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's because of you that this show is so successful. And I want to thank you for always tuning in and being a part of the audience. God bless you. Today, we are in the presence of a living legend. We have Bill Hill, the comedian and actor here today. Let me tell you about Bill. Bill is a legendary rising star of the American stage, television, music, and film. Cherished not only for his gifts as an actor, comedian, and most motivational speaker, but also for his commitment to his community. He is among the most exciting and respected talents in the United States and abroad. His looks and diverse talents have often had him compared to Red Fox. He has the presence of an Eddie Murphy, acting capability of a Denzel Washington, and personality as inviting as Martin Lawrence. Always funny and candid about the himself and the world he helped shape. Bill Hill, over the years, over the past two decades actually, has in entertained more people than you and I can imagine. He's entertained more than a half million people. He has created a loyal fan base that has invested and believed the world created from his comedy and acting, making him a successful entrepreneur. Help me help you by welcoming this living legend. Bill, how are you? I'm doing. Wait. Wait, there we go. Am I good? Now you're good. Hi, Bill. Everything's good. How you doing, Lady Charmaine? Everybody else on the panel, how's everybody doing? Everybody's good. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, for the most part, I'm good. I'm just waiting for November so, so I can cast my vote and hopefully we can get everything back the way it needs to be. <laughs> Amen. This is a this is a living nightmare. I know that's right. Yeah, this, so this 
this is Stephen King type stuff going on out here. What's happening? <laughs> So, Bill, you know what? It is crazy going on, and we wanted to ask you, a living legend, how do you get your funny on in the midst of this crazy, chaotic world? Um, you know what? That's a good question, Lady Charmaine. And, well, it's, it's kind of tricky because you have to kind of, like, take yourself out of the equation. I still have to try to make things funny, even though it's like we at the first chapter of the end of the world I I don't it, it's kind of hard to make people laugh and people wondering you know how long they got their apartment till before they get evicted right. so it's, it's real hard and it, it, to me myself with not being able to go on stage and you could do shows on zoom and that's cool but me myself I like I like the crowd so it's it's uh you gotta look at the bright side it could be worse I don't know how much worse it could be, but it could it, it, it could be worse. So you got to just look at the bright side and cherish the good times and, you know, just keep your faith strong in God. And then this too shall pass. When, I don't, I don't know, but hopefully in the next couple of days. <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's all good. I know that's right, Bill. So keeping the, the positive in the front of your mind, the forefront yeah. of your mind, and yeah, you, got to, you got to, you know, because it, it's it's like it's a, it's a weird it's a weird vibe, as I I got messed up, I might as well call it what's going on around the world. You know what I'm saying? Because there's still some good people out here, black and white. But see, the president trying to separate everybody, and people like, no, nah, that white lady next door, she cool. Or that black guy next door, no, he's cool, but he's trying to brainwash people and. Being with the corona going on and 5G technology and this all this crap. But at the end of the day, God gonna always win. They can do whatever they want to do. They can lie about whatever they want to lie about. God has the last word in this whole pandemic, epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it. Amen. And that's just real talk. I you know, but it's hard. It's hard. I ain't gonna lie. It, it's because with being an entertainer, we perform for people. Right. You know, performing on Zoom and and whatever other platform is okay, but it, nothing can replace a live crowd when I can see the expression on your face from things coming out of my mouth. That makes the joke or the story just that much better. But one thing for sure, you have to be able to adapt. So me doing this on Zoom with you is a form of me adapting to the circumstances. Bill, you said the key word, adapt. adapt. People have to be flexible and adapt because we don't know what's going on. The world is changing every single day and you have yeah. to adapt to your circumstances. And one mm -hmm. of the things I wanted to do while I have, I have you, Bill, is for those people who are feeling depressed right now and feeling like, they have no hope. What would you see to those people to give them hope and to help them come out their depression? Well, one thing I would say to them is, is what I do myself. I just pray. You know, I, I, I pray a prayer every morning, <clears throat> somewhat the same type of prayer. You just have to just, first of all, you have to have faith. If you got an inkling of faith that things can, can turn out for the better, then stand on that little faith that you have, but but then get deeper into your faith and just sit back and let God work because you can't get in the way of him working. You got to just say what you need and believe in him going to make it happen for you. And then you got to step back. You can't be, you know, try, oh, no, God, let me do it this way. No, he going to tell you how it's going to be done. Just sit your butt back, let him work. But you got to have faith. That can get you out of depression, anger, suicidal thought because he will talk to you once you let him know what's on your mind and what you're going through you'll get an answer you know what I'm saying it, it, you, you'll see an answer you'll feel an answer you'll, you'll get it but you gotta just step out on your faith mm -hmm. and that to me is the main thing I did that myself years ago I was living in DC yeah where I met your husband that shout out my man Warren B thank you uh I, I what what happened was 
I told myself, I want to go to Hollywood. But I don't even really have any money, you know? I didn't have no money. <laughs> I, I, I was staying with somebody at the time, and everybody was like, you're going to Hollywood? What you going to do in Hollywood? I'm like, I'm going to be a comedian, be an actor. So and I had a girlfriend that time, and she couldn't go because her mom was kind of sick, going blind or whatever. So I just told myself, I said that I'm going to step out on faith and just go. Mm -hmm. I told myself that I would sleep, i sleep on the beach. <laughs> I know that's right. I, I didn't know that it get cold in LA at the beach. It'd be about like, <laughs> 50, like 50, 55 degrees. That wind be blowing off that beach. But that's how far I was willing to go. I just, I jumped on a Greyhound. I took a three day bus ride. Mm. I had one, I had $100 to my name. Mm. So we, three days on the bus is a long time. So when I got to LA, first of all, the bus ride was crazy. It was crowded the whole time. It was real crazy. So I get to LA, I get to Sunset and Vine. That's where Greyhound Station was at. When I got off the bus, I had $10. <laughs> I spent, you know, you stop here, you get this, stop here, you get that. We're stopping all these things. $10. I get off the bus. It's a KFC next door, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I bought $6 worth of chicken. Dang. So now I have $4 to my name in Los Angeles. And I, you know, I, I didn't know that many people there, but I knew some people. And I called. One of my good friends' name is David Edwards. Dave Edwards is from D.C. He was in the movie House Party 3, uh, The Real World with MTV. So I called him. His brother asked the phone. His name is Mark, Mark Edwards. He said, where you at? I said, I'm at the Greyhound, Sunset and Bank. He said, I'm on my way. He came and got me. Mind you, I just got the same $4. I then ate the last piece of chicken. He picks me up. He takes me to the apartment that they live in. And the apartment uh, street name was Detroit Street. Now, I'm from Detroit. <laughs> so when I pull up to the street, I'm like, Detroit Street? Oh, man. I don't know what type of thought I had, but I was like, God got me. I know God got me. Now, the streets say Detroit Street. I'm from Detroit. So we get in the apartment. Dave comes home, because this is when it show, they're about to premiere the movie House Party 2. Uh -huh. He says, you can stay here as long as you want. I want you to come to the premiere of the movie with me tonight. I'm like, tonight? I ain't took a shower in three days. I'm like, I got to stay in the shower for at least 24 hours. <laughs> so I, I get cleaned up. A limousine pulls up that night. And... Uh, we went to the premiere of House Party 2 or at the Chinese Man's Theater on Hollywood Boulevard, and I was outside standing on the red carpet, and it's, that's when it hit me. I said, I stepped out on faith, and look at where I'm at right now. Wow. So that whole thing, that faith is so big that it can, it can give you extra power that you don't even have. Well, you don't think you have. So that's why I say anybody going through depression, financial depression, you know, you're thinking suicidal thoughts, you're trying to figure out how you're going to do this, just don't even do nothing and just pray on it and let your faith be known that you're going to stand in your faith and stay stepped out on your faith and you can win. I'm a living testament because people was like, you did what? I'm like, yeah, I sure did. I caught the bus and I had no money when I got the bus. And then right after all that, the earthquake happened. The big one that was 7.0 earthquake. What? It happened. I was there for the, I was there only a, for maybe a week or two. The earthquake came, the building got kind of damaged, you know, and I never left. And I still just, I, every day of my life is just basically on faith. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't see your faith like that. So you can't tell everybody everything because they'll try to, the first thing they said, how are you going to do that? Well, how much, well, do you got enough money to do this? 
well, how are you going to pay for that? Well, how are you going to do this? I'm like, you got it. Something going to happen. Something, something going to come from somewhere, a blessing, a miracle, whatever you want to call it. I didn't, this didn't happen to me several times. I didn't had several instances where I stepped out on faith and God just said, look, don't worry about it. I got you. And I just keep it moving. Oh. And that's it. So just in fact, in my words to anybody going through anything, Oh, I think it's saying unmute. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the screen keep popping up saying I was muted. So yeah, so that's my that's my my answer to that question. Just just step out on faith and 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 trust and believe that it can get better. But don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up because that's that's almost like when you beat yourself, it's like you're judging yourself. Like don't judge yourself. You are good enough. You you're better. You're good enough to do what you're trying to do. You know, and I, I went through this yesterday. So yesterday, I took a state exam to become a licensed life accident and health insurer. Wow. I've been studying for five months. Excellent. So I go in the building, and I kind of was doubting myself. I was like, hmm, I wonder, can I really pass this thing? Now, I've been passing all the simulators tests, you know what I'm saying? The simulations, I passed all those. Good. But when I took it, at some point in time, in the middle of taking it, I told myself, I got this. I just pumped myself up and said, I got it. And then again, of course, I was scared when the results came in, but for a minute, <laughs> for a minute I had to pump myself up because I'm like, I don't want to take this test again. It's 150 questions, and you only have 150 minutes. Mm. And so I passed. And when I passed, as I was walking out. Yeah, thank you, thank you. As I was walking out the building, I think the first thing I said was, you know, thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you, God, for giving me the strength and the power to do what I did to take a test on some things I don't even have no inclination about. But I studied because I prepared myself to pass. But that was just stepping out because I'm like, I, I got to do something. I have to have a plan B. Ain't no comedy shows going on. I'm not coming to New York to do no shows, nowhere. You know, so people doing outdoor shows. I might do an outdoor event, maybe, if it's safe enough and people got their mask on. But I'm not, it, there's no indoor activity for me, because I, I don't, I, I can't get sick. I can't get my kids sick. So it's like, is it worth it trying to keep pushing it? I'm not going to push it no way. So I said, you know what? Let me work on a whole nother career. Because the way it's looking, that's one of the most things people going to need is some doggone life insurance. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? And I'm going to sell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so just step out on faith, man. I mean, I had a lot of people telling me, don't quit your day job. Do you sure you can make it in L.A.? Or why would you want to go way out there? What is you doing? Why are you not trying to do this? Why are you? FC people, when they see you striving for something, they their job is to tear your thing down, to tear it down, because they ain't striving for nothing. Mm hmm so when they see you basically a crab trying to get out the barrel, their main job is to tear what you're trying to do down. But that right. don't work over here. That don't work over here. No, I ain't buying it. I ain't buying it. I ain't I buying it. Right. But, yeah, but it's all good, though. It's all good, Charmaine. Bill, I tell you, thank you so much for sharing that inspiring story about living and stepping out on faith. So many yes. people needed to hear that today because it's very important to know that God is in control and he's got us and he can take anything and make it happen for you. And I'm glad yes. that you shared your testimony with us. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thanks you be thank you for having me. I appreciate you, Lady Charmaine. Bill, I got another question for you. Okay. Okay. So for those people who are trying to get their funny on in the midst of a crisis and they're right. thinking to themselves, 
should I do Netflix? Should I do Hulu? Or how, how do, what's the best way to get comedy today? Uh, to be honest with you, I think the best way might be kind of like exactly what you're doing on Zoom. You know, you, you, you invite, you let people know that you're going to have a little show. And if you can't subscribe to the Zoom hookup and pay five bucks or something to donate to the, to the show that I'm trying to do. And with social media is helping a lot of up and coming comedians. See, when I started, there was no, there was, I don't even know if there was, it was computers, but I don't know if they had color screens. <laughs> 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 And so it, it's, it's way different, you know? So I, like I say, the, the social media is a way to do it, but you, the, the main thing you must do is be original. And by being original, you have to look at all the comedians and or comedians through history to make sure you're not trying to say what they've already said. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta do your research. And that's the one thing I think some young people don't do. They look at what's on the first page or whatever. They don't dig deep down through there, you know, to really get the full the full facts. But like I said, social media would be the best way to do it and be original and and study the craft. See, that's you got to study the craft, meaning that in a, in a joke or a story, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end. So comedy is the setup, the middle, the punch. It's, it's all one, two, three, but you can't just drag it out. People be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, you got to kind of get to it, get to it kind of quick. And that takes time and practicing. Over time, you'll, you'll get all that, but you got to definitely study. You got to study the crab, the great ones, Richard Pryor, Red Fox, Rudy Ray Moore, you know, uh, George Carlin. You know, everybody, Bill Cosby, Eddie Murphy, Dave Chappelle, you know, you got to study these people and, and, and see, you know, how their brain works and try to ride that same way. But it's not easy. And if you, if you, if you, if you under 50, well, really, if don't start trying to do no comedy stuff at 50, because it takes 10 years to kind of get your feet in the door. So that means you'll be 60 on your first paid gig. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you want to start kind of young and write. You got to write. You got to write because you come up with stuff and then you say, dang, what was that joke I came up with? I don't forgot what that joke is. Because when you get older, you know, I'm 50, I'll be 54 years old in December. So your mind gets kind of clear. Thank you. So your mind can get kind of weird because I can remember when I was younger, I can remember a hundred people phone number inside my brain. Mm. I can go to a pay phone and dial your number. Wow. Or I can pick up a house phone and dial your number. Right now today, we don't know nobody's number no more. That's the truth. Just think about it. Think about it. We, I don't even know my daddy number. Cause I <laughs> his name. His number's typed in his dad. I don't, I just go to dad and I press the D and that's his number. So we don't even, that's how this stuff done tricked us. It done made our brains lazy because to do, to find out, you know. So it's like, that's the only part. You got to write it down. And I fought myself. I don't write stuff down all the time, but I'm like, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to keep the lights and the gas on. To be I honest that's with you. Right. To be to be one hundred honest with you, Lady Charmaine, I'm not thinking about no comedy right now. But it's so it's so deep rooted in me that it's gonna always be there. See, I'm trying to figure out: Am I gonna pay my daughter's tuition next month and still pay for her car and take care of this and take care of that and take care of this with no shows? Mm. I stepped out on faith a long time ago, way before March, when the corona hit. Because I'm like, look, you got to have a plan B. If you're in the entertainment business, now if you're in some other business, you might can win. But my situation, no. 
My kids don't want to hear about, oh, well, the corona is the reason why we can't have uh, lobster tonight. We're eating hot dogs. <laughs> 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 they don't want to hear that. They, they, it, it, you know, they want, they want life to go on as it was before corona. And that's a hard thing to do. I'm telling my kids, look, when I go to the grocery store, it's dangerous. They don't, they don't know that when I go in the store and get food for dinner, I got gloves on, I got a mask on. I'm trying to make sure nobody don't cough on me, don't bump into me. We <laughs> all fighting over that one roll of toilet paper. I mean, it's it's ludicrous out here. It is ludicrous. So, but kids, they don't know what you go through to make things happen day to day. But one thing was show. It's, you still can find the funny, even if it's, it's, comedy is tragedy, but tragedy is comedy. There's still some funny things in all of this. Like, I was thinking, if I could buy, if I could find me a mask and I put like a little cut in it to where that it can do like this, then maybe I could eat with the mask on. <laughs> <laughs> If I can just get the mask, put the cut right here to make the mask do like that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, so you guys did laugh right quick. I did put one out there for y'all. That's one of my new jokes. Yeah, well, that's, that's a good joke, one. Bill. I love it. That's my new one. Well, Bill, I knew the, the last you time I was talking oh. to us about the oh. truth about what's going on. And the right. fact that you have nobody's free without a plan B today. And so you have to do multiple things, have multiple revenue incomes streams so that you can live. And that's the truth. That's right. not just for comedians. That's for anybody. Yeah. People have found that things that they were doing in March, they can't do now in August. So you, what right. do you do? You got to get into your creative self and mm -hmm. basically reach deep and come up with something new and, and out of the box. You know what's crazy? Hmm? So when you, what you just said, you got to work on plan B, right? Yes. So my plan B was to file for pandemic unemployment assistance, right? <laughs> Why did somebody file in my name? What? I'm dealing with identity theft right now. Get out. I have not received no pandemic money. When I tell you, when that when I found out that my social number had been used, I've been mad for the last three months. Mm. So that's why I was telling you, comedy ain't really on my mind right now. So today, my girl, she called the people for me, right? Unemployment. She said, let's check on your on your claim. Now in July. I called and did the whole identity theft report, the fraud department and all that. Guess what happened? What? They didn't even fill out my imp Hold on, you something went wrong. Hold on, let me unmute myself. Am I, am I still unmuted? You're mute. Um, I'm good? Yeah. Okay. So they, I talked to them and they say that they didn't put your contact info in. And I'm saying, how did they not do that? You know what I'm saying? So it's uh, I'm dealing with that. I'm dealing with identity theft, no pandemic money, and I'm still standing out on the faith. I'm still yes. standing on the faith. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel you. I feel you. And you are doing it, Bill. Go ahead. That's real talk. And like, the lady on the phone, she was like, I don't know why they didn't put your contact information in correctly. Mm. I'm like, Damn, why didn't they do that? Because you know why? Because you got people that work for these agencies. They're the ones in charge of all the fraud, of the scams. They're the ones passing through your name, my name, uh, 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 everybody else's name, you know, to uh, get the, the, the pandemic money to them and they get a portion of it. It's all a big scam. So, but my, my tax people told me, they said, Bill, you ain't gotta do nothing. Cause in the fall, everybody going to jail. <laughs> and I said, won't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pressing charges. 
I'm pressing as many charges as I can press. Pain and suffering, emotional distress. I want it all. I know, know that's right. But that tripped me out today to find out that they had no contact info on me and I registered with several different organizations. Wow. And I said, I said to myself, that that's how my day started off. That's how it started today. So I, at the end of the day, the lady, she was very nice though. She told me a story about herself and she said, I'm sorry this happened to you. She said, but you upload your, your driver's license and your social security card and we're gonna make sure you get your claim in and you get to retrieve all that back money that's owed to you. Praise God. Praise God. You dig what I'm saying? So that that just, uh, you know, it's a, it's a continuous fight. It's a continuous fight. We in the battle, we soldiers in the army, basically. That song, soldiers in the army, that's real talk. Because we are. And the soldiers are the ones who have to stay on point. We can't fall off mentally or spiritually. We got to still believe. We got to believe it's going to get better. God going to get all this corona up out of here. He going to get that president up out of here. Anybody who else ain't right, they getting up out of here. You know what I'm saying? But I think God is looking to see how many of us are actually down with him. This is a test on his end, too, to see where we at. And I'm riding with, I'm riding with faith, so, you know. I ain't caught a cold in six months. I'm winning. I know that's right. I know that's right. And I'm definitely down with God. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, Bill. Yes. Can I have your final thoughts that you would like to share with the listening or the watching audience today? Uh, yeah. My, uh, my final thoughts would be because the last time... <laughs> The last time I did your show, I was cussing up a storm, but, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, said, I keep it clean today. I keep it clean. I'm a raw comic, you know what I'm saying? And if I, I, I use profanity, yes, I do, but I also That's know okay. how to talk. Yeah, but I, I also know how to talk just regular, you know, without profanity and all that other shit. Excuse me. But, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But my, my final thought, like I say, you know, Now's the time for everybody to just dig deep, pull your bootstraps up, and just 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 keep your eye on the prize. That the, there is going to be some light at the end of this tunnel. You know what I'm saying? Because the devil ain't the devil can't win. He can't win this one. He's not gonna win. I know that's right. You know, and and and, and hopefully in November we can get get the idiot up out of there. You know what I'm saying? We already know who he working for. It, it shows you, you can tell who he down with. He down with Lucifer. His <laughs> actions, his ways, and all that is showing you that. You know what I'm saying? And and, and the situation with the boy uh, 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 Jacob Blake and and uh, George Floyd and just, you know, uh, Breonna Taylor. With, with all this going on, you know what I'm saying? It's like we got to sit back and really reanalyze things. Mm -hmm. You know, all this stuff going on, I'm not buying no Gucci. I'm not buying no Prada. I'm not buying no Louis. I'm not buying, no, I'm not doing no traveling, no trips. I'm not doing none of that because the people that run the economy evidently don't respect my dollar. If you let all these things go down and you're not saying nothing, but you still want me to go take a trip and ride the airplane because the ticket costs $50, but you ain't said nothing about Jacob Blake, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, all lives matter. But right now, Black Lives really matter because we're the ones being shot down by the police. So I'm not buying nothing. So we need to sit back, reanalyze, what we're doing and come together as a people, black, white, Latino, Asian, we all come together and we can take it all back over. Mm. So we got to think about that. If people are trying to get you to separate, that, is that again, there's got to be a reason why they don't want you co-mingling with each other because they know their strength in numbers. Mm. 
we all come together like we did when Obama ran. We all came together. You remember that? Yeah. We all came together. It wasn't no shortage on toilet paper. Matter of fact, here, take my roll of toilet paper. You can have that one. I already, I already bought three. You know? <laughs> it was love. It was love. So we got to get back to the love. Yes. Don't even pay attention to the media. If they part of the game to the plan, I call it plandemic, not pandemic, plandemic. Mm. Same thing happened in the year 1918. It was called the Spanish flu. Hello. And the same safety precautions are the same ones that we're using today. The same ones. Six feet, movie theaters closed down, drive-in theaters, everything closed down. We got to come together. If we just came together for one day, November 4th, we just all come together for that one day, November 5th, we can go back to arguing. But just on the 4th, I can <laughs> take me to the side and let's come together and let's get the right people in office so we can continue to live and flourish in our lives. That's my, that's my final thoughts for the day for everybody. Bill, thank you so much for giving us such a wonderful wonderful show today. And Bill, how can people reach you? What are your URLs for social media? Uh, you know what, my, my URLs, are, I'm on Facebook as Bill Hill. I'm on Instagram as One Bill Hill. And I don't have Twitter I, because the idiot, 45, he didn't took over Twitter, so I don't even use my Twitter no more. But Instagram <laughs> and Facebook, and my email address is the numerical number one, Bill Hill at gmail.com. And um, feel free to holler at me. You know, it's all good. I love doing the Lady Charmaine show, Taboo Talk with Lady Charmaine. And um, I, so now I'm going to start the rest of my day. And I, I, have a, I have a good outlook right now. I feel good because I had a good, positive conversation with you guys. You guys listening to me and so my, 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 my level of positivity is, is on 10 right now. So I, I feel good enough to walk out here and take care of my stuff I got to take care of and not cuss nobody out and no have road rage. Hey, you're giving claps from the audience. Everyone is giving you a clap. Thank you, Bill. We love you. We Thank love you, you Bill. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. So... We have come to the end of this show. This show was done because you are very, very important and special. That's why Bill took his time to come share with you his testimony, his insight, his love, and his real emotions about what's going on. And he shared with you his story, what's happening with him and how to get your funny on, how to come out of depression, how to have a plan B. I mean, he gave you some nuggets and he did this because you truly are wonderful, deserving nothing less than what God has promised you. And God has promised you abundant, happy, prosperous, peaceful, restful life. Continue seeking God's face in all that you do and a wonderful life will occur for you. Taboo Talk featuring me, Lady Charmaine Day, exists to help transform your mind, body, and spirit, utilizing the principles of Jesus Christ. Continue turning, tuning in and watching Taboo Talk. I promise I will continue to have living legends like Bill Hill come on and give you a word in season. I know I was blessed by hearing Bill today. I know you were blessed by hearing Bill today. So continue to watch. I'll bring on more subject matter experts who will love and like you and share with you from their heart like Bill did because you are special. Well, until next time, take care of yourself. I also wanna thank the people who are in the audience. Let me just show you. I have Tasha. Hi, Tasha. Hey, Tasha. I have Gina from Costa Rica. Gina. And I have Omega from Far Rockaway. And they were all a part of the audience being here, sharing, loving, and appreciating what Bill had to say. And so, Bill, we thank you. We love you. And until next time, take care of yourself. Will you come back and visit us again, Bill? 
Yes, I sure would. You already know, Lady Charmaine. Not a problem. Ah, uh, thank you, Bill. Well, until next time, take care of yourself. Stay special. Goodbye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you.